Welcome to my latest episode of Ships Tips. Now, what a place to bring the cameras. It's, this is actually called Shearwater Lake. It's near the Longleat Safari Park. It's a day ticket, so you can get down here. It's in an absolute glorious part of Wiltshire. I love fishing this lake, there's just something about it. But I brought, you, well, brought the cameras here because I've actually fished a five series match. Um, which I actually won, thank God. I actually enjoyed the fishing. I was very, very lucky. I caught tons of fish. I caught carp up to sort of nearly 20 pound. I caught 200 pound of carp in one match. And actually the last match, or the last match in the series, I caught 100 pound of bream. It's all about, or it was all about, long range feeder fishing. And even today, I'm, you know, I'm here in a hoodie at the moment, but it was sort of down to zero degrees this morning and that was the sort of conditions that we fished in and i know you guys out there love it when i take you back to a situation you know give you the nitty gritty of the baits and also how i caught these fish so the first thing i'm going to do i'm actually itching to get going i've got all my rods set up i've actually mixed my ground bait and pellets but i'm going to run you through all the raw ingredients that i fished um, to win the shearwater league well, on the seat here is all the ingredients and baits that I used at Shearwater in the league. I've had a great league. I won the league, which was fantastic. And I caught loads of fish, carp and bream. Let's run you through what I used. Now, ground bait was really, really important. First off, Max Meffer Mix Original. You can't beat it. Even though this is a clear water venue, I just felt that that Max, Max Meffer Mix Original was dead right. It made a cloud. And obviously I mixed it with my micros and it just worked an absolute treat. And it's simple to use. The pellets I used, I used Fin Perfect Originals and also Krill and Squid Stickies. 50-50 mix. Slightly different how I actually sort of soak these. I actually put the same amount of water as pellets. Because I'm using an XR method and not my sort of inline method, but I use one because of distance, two because of depth. But obviously we'll talk about that as I'm fishing. So nice and easy. 50-50 mix of both pellets, soaked the same amount of water and just left 45 minutes. So same with the ground bait, just done them as I got to me peg. I didn't do them the night, you know, the morning, I just done them as I got to me peg, so everything's nice and fresh. Banoffee corn, and you'll probably see as I go along in this film, banoffee for me was my favourite sort of smell of this hot, this lake. It just, I just fell in love with it, which I have done before. And I know we've all got our own little sort of sweet things, if you like, for different venues, but Banoffee for me, whether it was the Bandams that I used, you know, the corn, even the Banoffee bait booster, it was what I put on. Let's talk about bait booster anyway. I think you all know by now, I love this stuff. It just makes everything sweet, nice, but I introduced this as I was going along, which I do on a lot of my fishing. I did bring some dead maggots. Maggots was my base mix, the same with the corn. I put that out at the start, depending on where I draw. Obviously the conditions were tough some days. We'll talk about it as I get going. Um, Fluoro rocks, obviously again, that was sort of my base mix and add it in as I go, just to make some flex, just trying to get the fish competing and feeding. And that's what was going through my mind. And then we got the haze. Now the haze, I put on my pellets as I was going along, just to, for a bit of extra attraction, extra smell. And then obviously I used my absolute liquid flavouring, which I absolutely smothered in all my um, bandoms. <laughs> you can see it in there. It's absolutely choked with it. That's what I'd done like weeks before I actually come to this venue. And I'm doing a lot more of that now. Since Jake showed me this ages ago, I've started doing it on all of my bandoms. I think it just makes a nice smell. And the amazing thing is, I actually had to change the hook bait every single chuck. Whether it's in my mind or not, I don't know, but as soon as I changed my hook length, or my hook, even when I was catching lots of fish, I chucked back out with the same hook bait, I wouldn't get a bite. So every single fish, I changed my hook bait. Just that extra bit of smell. But let's talk about what I put in at the start of the session, and it was really, really simple. Obviously, you, you, I could vary this as I went along. It was basically two handfuls of ground bait, a handful of the pellets, and in there, I put some corn, and I actually used a big window to get this out to start the session off. Some red maggots. It's what I call a guano mix. Now, if any of you would have seen Life on Earth many years ago, and they were in a cave with a load of bats, basically it's what the bats, it's the bat poo. And there was a massive pile of it, and ever since that, I've called it the guano mix. 
And then on top of that, obviously put some, a few fluoro rocks, not loads, just sprinkled a few on like that and just made a nice mix to get in you know, a bed in there. I could feed all of that. I'll probably feed all of that today because it's a little bit warmer today. I'm actually, you know, it's absolutely freezing this morning. One degree when we got here, the sun's come out. It's absolutely beautiful. So I am absolutely itching to get going. One thing I haven't spoke to you about is the actual mix I've put around the feeder. Now, I've not put any corn, obviously we're fishing with an XR method and in there, there was two handfuls of ground bait and one handful of pellets. I thought the ground bait was massive for making the cloud. So that's my mix for the actual feeder. A few floral rocks in there, a few little flecks. I'm absolutely itching to get going. Let's get back. I'm going to get out there. I've already clipped up at 72 meters with my rod that I'm fishing with and also my feeder feeder rod. Let's get this bait out there and hopefully get some bites. We've been going for about 45 minutes. I've put that kit out. And this is the second bite. I've had a bream, probably one of the smallest breams in here really, about two pound. And I've, it was a nice bite. I've had this bite literally 59 seconds. So it's probably been on the deck a minute and a half. And this is what I just love about sheer water. Yeah, it can be hard in the winter like obviously the winter league that I've fished here, the five rounds that I've fished, you know, there's people that have actually really, really struggled. But when you can get on a few fish, get everything right, be confident in what you're using, there ain't nothing better than a bit of long range, well, method feeder fishing. This feels like actually a proper nice big carp, this. Elasticated stem feeder. Obviously I'm fishing with braid main line. 10 pound shock leader and I'm in the shock leader now it's actually onto the reel so I know I'm sort of two rod links out oh yeah look at that it's just something about when you come to a great big lake like this you can see the stem now the elastic out that is a bonus when I've been fishing here that's a major bonus it's just something about it, especially when, you know, being in the southwest. That's an, actually a decent carp, that. Oh. Yes, baby. I will take that. So that's on a medium XR, and we'll talk about that as I go through the film, why I've been fishing a medium, why I changed to a large. I'm not even going to hold this thing up. I'm not even going to risk it. It's probably, I would say... 14 15 pound that 14 pound i'll give that so we'll put him in a separate net and we won't keep him in there very long it's just for filming because fair you know thanks to rob hughes for letting us on got a nice big landing net i said we won't keep him in there for long because we don't want to especially on a big water like this Let's get back out there. Still a little bit of ground bait and pellet in me XR banjo. Favorite. We'll talk about. 
we're talking about, I've been calling this place for me, Banoffee City, because everything I'm using here is Banoffee. All the bait booster, the haze, everything, even me bandums are completely soaked in Banoffee. But let's get back out there. I don't want to miss the opportunity. So I've got my mix of two mils in ground bait. Give that a nice big squeeze on. Fill that mold back up. Really, really simple. This is the side of it. You know, that soft bit on the top. I'm fishing in probably 16, 18 foot of water, I would say. I'm fishing 72 meters, which has probably been about the average I fished here during the five rounds. Let's just get that back out. Give that a nice whack. It's a clip. Follow it down. On the deck. Get that on the butt rest, all nice and ready to go. Start tightening up. Get me stopwatch going. That was actually, wasn't, I thought it was obviously, I thought it was a bream when I actually had the bite. Because you've got a lot of, um, obviously you've got a lot of line out there, which you've got to get down. Sort of flat calm where I'm fishing today on the dam wall. And that's what gives you such, I mean, the matches that I fished here, they have been hard and they've been really, really close sometimes. Like numbers of bream, the odd carp, obviously makes a huge difference when you think the bream average probably three three and a bit pound on average I would say if you miss a bite if you get a few liners you don't get a bite it is so so like horrible because you know you're so close to sort of winning your section framing in the match yes there has been some tough areas and I've been in some tough areas and I've caught some fish and that's what I brought the cameras here to Shearwater today to show exactly what I've been doing on a big water like Shearwater. Got another nice bream on. It's not one of the biggest bream in here, but believe you me, they're crafty. They are crafty on in here. You can have an odd liner, sort of two, two and a bit pound, which is like your average stamp of where I'm fishing on the dam wall. And what I'm gonna do I'll get this one back in the net and run you through all the little things that I think have made a difference. You know, whether you're trying to catch an odd bream or whether you're trying to catch a big weight. Look at that. Absolutely perfect condition, real chunky. Obviously it gets carp fished a lot, this lake. And um, obviously they get a lot of food. That's why they're a bit like me. Nice and chunky. Let's get another little yellow band them on. And to me, yellow was the best bait by far. I didn't even met once I got switched on to yellow on this venue, and we all, I think we all got our own little colours on different venues. But look at that. So I've actually cast that out in sort of 18, 20 feet of water. I've played in the fish all the way back, and I've still got bait in that XR, and that's a medium. And what I found. And we'll talk about that. Let me just load the feeder up. Well, because I want to get back out there because we've caught a few now. So just get me mould. Put a little bit of bait booster on that before I've actually started fishing with it. Get that in that XR mould. So that's full up. Give that a nice big squeeze on. Like that. And then I sort of double load it. So fill that up three quarters. Bring it back over. And I don't really do much else with that. You probably just see that little yellow band them sticking through. A little squeeze like that. And I think that was really important on here. So what I'm gonna do, get this one back out. 72 meters. Like that. Let that hit the clip. Then let it go down. So I hit the clip quite far back. And because it's deep, I try and let that line go down as freely as possible. Or on this occasion, braid. And that's one thing. Let me just set this a second. So I'll get me stopwatch. Stopwatch, again, really important. It's giving you information 
on when you get your bite. You know, if you get a run of fish and you think, do I sort of put the big, the big window back out again? We you know with like some of the bait that we started the session with. It's all things like that that I'm trying to process. Obviously, some of the matches were really, really tough. I've actually got two rods set up. They're the same rod. They're a 12 foot 6, 80 gram distance master. I have one set up at 72 meters. And the other one I'm, I've actually set up was at 76 meters. And that rod come into play when it was tough. And I was like literally casting around to just try and catch some fish. But obviously you want to come to a big water like this. You want to put some bait in and you want to fish on your bait and catch. That's when you're going to catch your weights. And luckily enough, that's what happened to me in, in several of the matches. In one of the matches, it was basically, I drew absolutely terrible. There'd been nothing really caught there during the set, uh, the, the actual matches. And I've gone there, I fished like 90 meters. I just chucked a feeder around. And I've ended up with like nine bream. So I'm just setting that. So I had a nice big, there we go. Look at that. One minute 20, that'll do. Another bream. But what a perfect, to get on camera that, so I'm fishing like 18, 20 foot of water. I've got a 10 pound shot leader of sinking feeder mono, double the length of the rod. And it's never let me down. This is exactly the same setup that I've used for the whole series. And you've all seen on the Q and A's that I've done, how I do it. There's nothing, you know, it's simple stuff. And using the right rod, like I said, for me, we're casting that 12, six, 80 gram distance master. I can whack this out with a medium XR feeder up to nearly a hundred meters. And I ain't the best caster in the world. I've always said that. And I think for me, if I go up, if I step up, I'm only, I'm only saying what, you know, what I feel. This rod done everything for me. It was good at playing the fish. It was good at casting. So I've got an elasticated stem. The longer elasticated stems that Preston do. That's a nice bream. And just take your time. Every fish counted, honestly, in this, in these matches here. That's a nice fish, that. It's probably one of the big bronzes. Oh, yes, that do. So yellow bandum. Let's get him back. I'll cast back out and run, run you through the rod. Show you the rod. Got a size 12 KKH B. Well, it's not a B, it's a barbed because you can now use barbed on here. They are awesome. I think through the whole series, I lost five fish, which is incredible, really, considering you're winding these bream in sort of 70 to 90 meters. Let's get a little yellow band. Just simple setup, medium band on there, size 12, KKH, 019. Reflow power because obviously there's carp in here up to 20 odd pound. I did catch some right, you know, some real good carp. So let's go through that again. And that bait booster in there just keeps everything sort of nice. That mix, like I've always said on my videos, keep it on the dry side and add the bait booster to actually keep the mix as you want it. Got the geese having a meltdown in the background. So double load, nice little squeeze. Get yourself ready. Just make sure everything's right around the reel. Hit that clip back and then let that go down as, as sort of direct as you can. Like that. Don't worry about the braid sinking or anything like that. Quick tighten up stopwatch and like i'm like i'm said about the stopwatch it's so important if i get a, a you know if i start catching a few fish use the timings let the information go into your head 
you know, if I cast out four times when I've had a bit of a run of fish and it goes a bit dead, or I've had a few liners I can't catch, get your baiting up feeder again, get it back out, and that's what you've got to try and work out in your head. And sometimes during the sessions I've had here in the matches, even when I had liners I couldn't catch, for me, that was the time to put sort of four feeder fulls of bait out. Even though you think it would be the opposite and actually bring the fish off the bottom, it actually got them to follow it down. So um, without a stopwatch, you've got a job to sort of do that in your head. So I've got my other rod set up, just to show you guys, just keep my eye on that. So I've got 620 intensity reels. Everything is exactly the same. So I've got the same reels, the same braid, obviously the same setup. So 10 pound shot leader, just with a swivel on. So I've had several of these stems with the hook lengths on. I can just change the stem. I don't have to change the hook lengths. I just take it off and change the stem with the hook length on. Just tweak that a little bit. Just got a decent curve in the, in the rod because some of the bites you get, because you're fishing elasticated stem, it's a bit like that and it just goes slack. So you want a nice curve in it, keep everything nice and tight because we are fishing out a decent way. And this actual rod was sort of four or five meters past my main feed. It, it did come into play a couple of the matches where I, I just cast out. I felt the fish sort of just went for me and I cast past, caught a few, but most of the time I did try and catch on me bait. So 620 reel, nice and big reel, nice big spool, nice easy setup, size of feeders. I mean, I timed, sort of learnt a little bit from stop, you know, using a stopwatch. On an XR medium, I thought it, with the mix that I was using, the way I mixed it, it was taking eight minutes to the whole ground bait to soak through. That's quite a long time when you think about it, especially when you've got to take the impact of chucking it in 70 meters plus and you're fishing in sort of 18, 20 foot of water. On a large feeder, it was definitely less. Because of that surface area in there, you couldn't actually get it to compact in as tight. And I think that was really important on some of the matches I fished. You know, that's the information you, I'm passing on to you. And I thought it made a big, big difference, especially fishing in deep water. Four inch at length. Like I said, I had bands. I did have some, the. I did have some hook lengths tied up with rapid stops on and I could try a piece of corn, but 90% of the fish, or 99% of the fish that I caught were caught on six or eight mil band and wafters. Absolutely soaked in that Bonoffi liquid. Just trying to get as much smell. And the confidence I had was I've never probably been that confident of actually coming to a venue on a tough, you know, tough winter's day and catching more people, you know, more than what I caught, you know, people around me. I was so confident. And that's why I obviously brought you back here today. So like I said, 12 foot six distance master. That's the rod of my choice because I know I can throw it between 50 and sort of 90, you know, maybe even a hundred meters with a, with a medium XR feeder, 45 grams really really important i felt 45 grams was the feeder for me for distance really i just feel like because of the obviously you're putting quite a lot of bait double loading the feeder that probably give it another 20 30 grams so you've got to take that into consideration as well so let's just tighten that down and then what i would be doing now obviously i've got my guano mix there ready to go so if i wanted to put some more bait out it's ready I've got my mix there that I'm putting around the feeder. I would say 70% ground bait, 30% micros, so a little liner then. And then as I'm going, just introduce a little bit more bait booster. And I'm doing this all the time. Just keep everything right. And you'd be surprised by double loading the feeder, you'd be surprised how much of this you actually go through this mix. So instead of putting water on, I could add bait booster that gives it like obviously the smell, leaves that nice, you know, nice smell in the in the in the water. So just use your bait booster to keep everything right. That's perfect now. 
because obviously it's drying out because the sun's out today. And then look at my stopwatch, that's been out there for five minutes. I know now that that, there we go. Oh, missed it. What an idiot. That, in the match itself, honestly, it used to drive me up the wall. Absolutely mental, because it was so close. One of the matches I had nine Breen for £21. There was two 19s. And you miss a bite or lose one. Oh, honestly, it was like you wanted to snap your rod in half. So I just thought then, there's a tiny little bit of bait left in there, see? And I just felt like that was obviously getting very close to being at its sort of saturation point. So I'm not going to just get back out. But it, it was so good fishing, honestly, when you're on a few fish and you've got it right. You can put, you know, there's still a few lava rocks in there. And then sort of the haze come into it, really. I had a little bit of haze to me pellets before I, after I soaked. Right, let's get that back out a minute. Let's concentrate just for a minute. So out, it's a clip. Follow it down, just to try and get it down there as quick as possible and direct. Just held the rod out in front. Just tweak the reel a bit. A couple of times I've done that in the match and it's like there's one on. Doesn't happen all the time. So anyway, that's the that's obviously the gear that I used. And just talk you through one other little thing that I found was when I had liners and I couldn't, you know, it's so frustrating because you get an odd liner and you can't catch. You know they're in your peg or off the bottom. And that's when you that's when I felt I, I actually won of the last match. I had a nice run, I had a great start, put some gear in because the water had a light tinge to it, which is un, you know unusual for sheer water, because of the amount of rain we had. And um, I cast out a great first hour and a half. It was like, my God, this is great. And there was a lot of fish being caught that day. And um, all of a sudden it was like, I was, I was sort of five, six fish ahead of anyone else. And then I was just getting an odd liner. So I knew everything was working. I knew all the stuff that I'd done is getting me fish in my pair. Because Martin, who was to my right, I'm not saying, you're getting liners. He's like, no, I'm not getting liners. So I am. So I know I've drawn fish in my peg. And I remember sort of halfway through the match, I thought, I've got to make a decision here. I put a bit more bait out, which I did catch a few more. Then I thought, right, I'll just change the size of my feeder. And I went to the large XR. And honestly, it transformed my peg. I can't really put my finger on why. All I know is it made a big, big difference. I'm sure it's because it sort of, one, it carried a bit more bait. And two, it broke down just a little bit quicker. And it just released the bait. And that's all I can sort of put it down to really but it's little things like that that I think about and this is what these films are about is passing that information on to you and like I said going back to that medium XR for me it was like it, it's something that stuck in my mind that if you want a feeder that is holding your bait in that feeder longer definitely you know I thought it'd be the opposite I thought a bigger feeder would be better for actually holding it in and it wasn't. A smaller feeder was definitely 100% better and that's why I think I caught a lot more fish than people around me some days. And there we go, perfect timing. Brilliant, honestly. There's just something about winter fishing like I am. I know I'm, I know I'm sat in a nice hoodie today, but honestly, it was absolutely Baltic this morning. There was a couple of matches there. If you look over to my left, it's uh, absolutely freezing cold. And it was in the series. There'd be people where I am, some bathing, even when it was like minus three, minus four, across to my right, the sun beams onto that bank. And there'd be people on the road bank. They'd be wrapped up in Celsius clothing, moaning it is that cold, even though it's good area to draw. Then you've just got to keep winding, keep the pressure on, because you've got quite a heavy feeder. So what you've got to remember is the feeder actually plays the sort of bream. Just keep the pressure on nice. 012 braid. I just felt 012 for me. 
I didn't get any wind knots or anything like that. It never let me down. Obviously, it was a, it's amazing how I got into it as well, even playing the carp. It was simple. As long as you give yourself a nice big shock leader, there's a shock leader going for the eyes now. Just coming onto the reel, there's a shock leader. And some of the matches, you know, you, your, your heart was in your mouth because you knew every single fish was so important. You need a nice big landing net because you don't know what you're going to hook next in this place. There you go, that's a classic example. I'll show you that now. Oh, steady, mate. It's probably like three, three and a half pound. Haven't got me disgorger out. A beautiful shearwater bream. Average stamp that. I caught a hundred pound of them on the last match and it was it was freezing cold. We just had a couple of days of mild weather and these things had a proper go. And if you look at my feeder now, that was out there, I would say probably two minutes. Look at that. Now, if that had been a large XR, that would have been out of there. And they're all the little things that in my mind, I'll come away from here and um, it just made a big difference. Let's get back out and get another one. Got another beautiful, beautiful bream on. Probably one of the sort of the ones you want to catch in the matches, definitely. Like three and a half to four pound. Oh yeah, come on, baby. That's a nice fish that. Look at him. Nine minutes that was out for, so it's quite a long time. I'm not gonna hold him up because he's a bit fresh. Now, one thing that I've done, which is exactly what happened, and this is the sort of thing I use the stopwatch for, is I've had a nice little run, nice and steady, nothing mega. Bear in mind, this water's still freezing cold, and it was the same in the league match. You get an odd little spell of catching a few, and you think, this is great, and then all of a sudden, it all goes a bit funny. Use your stopwatch then to, in my mind, I'm calculating how long I've got to wait for a bite, if I have two or three casts and I start getting liners. And this is what's happened. The last 45 minutes is sort of the it's still it's still alright, but I've had I've, I've, I've like four or five casts without a fish and I get one. Three casts without a, without a fish, I get one. So I'm leaving out there for like 10 minutes maximum. And then I started getting liners in between. So what I've done, that was actually sort of nearly three quarters full up, which is what I started the session with. So I've got my big window back on chucked it back out probably I would say eight times and it's surprising how much bait you can get in a big one of those big window feeders I've chucked back out I said to Jay I hope this works and this is the gambles you've got to take this is the gambles that I took especially you're on a few fish I've chucked back out 30 seconds I got one I've just had another one then at nine minutes and the thing I think about is like when you're carp fishing or roach fishing sometimes it's like they're in your peg fizzing 
And I'm not saying they're fizzing out there, they might be, I just couldn't see it, because it is silty on this damn wall. But then you feed and then you catch. And I know we're chucking the feeder out every time, but sometimes it's just not enough. It's like they're there, minning around, they're off the bottom, there's a, probably a couple of them feeding, and then you sort of, don't, you know, not bombard it, but you're putting like eight or ten feeder falls in, and then all of a sudden they're back down again. And I've had two really, like one within, well, I've caught eight pound in basically ten minutes. And when you're not trying to catch that many fish, you've got to think about all that. But bites today have come, I've had a couple of bites really quickly, but most of the bites, I would say, between six and 10 minutes. So it's not bagging, but you, they're big fish. Only the one carp, and that doesn't surprise me at all on this place. You know, I think the water's got a bit of color in it. A lot of them carp, I would say, are probably off the bottom. You know, a lot of the carp anglers here fish zigs. It doesn't, doesn't surprise me one bit. And just like double loading it, yellow six mil bandum's been five five. Tried a ten mil, just sort of sits there, and just stuck with that medium, medium XR. Because I know that that bait is in that feeder. Let's just get him back out. It's so enjoyable. I love it, honestly. I absolutely love it. I don't. You know, in my area where I live, I know sort of bodding tons in places like that, you're fishing for an odd fish. And there's just something about it when you're fishing with big feeder rods, chucking it out. I know it's slightly different because anywhere you go with bream in, you, there's, it's a lot better because I think you can feed some bait, especially during the winter. That's what I love about shear water and lakes like that is you can put some bait in you know, you get an odd little liner and you know they're in your peg and hopefully all the little things that I've showed you, you know, the most important things is timing, you know, accuracy, you know, go out and practice. You know, I'm fishing 72 metres today. You know, go out and practice. The wind's nice today. Obviously, if it was windy, obviously it's a little bit more difficult. But fish within your means. I try and fish. I know for me personally, fishing with the gear that I'm fishing with today, 70 metres... I think roughly for me in any condition, I can be nice and accurate. I can fish, I can use the big baiting up window feeders. I, I, that's why I use the big baiting up window feeder because I can be really accurate. You know, it flies through the air a lot easier than a cage. And I just love that way. It's just something I've done over the last couple of years of doing this fishing. Just take that away with you. On me feeder feeder rod, it's just braid direct. I've got no shock leader on that, but obviously the two rods that I've set up, I've got that 10 pound shot leader. I've, you know, I've had a, a mega day. It's just normal sort of, you know, cold water bring fishing. I hope you've picked up some tips and then we're gonna carry on for a little bit longer. And like I said, now that's out there, I've actually gone through quite a bit. You'd be surprised, just double loading that feeder. So I'm gonna get some more match method mix, which is dried out. I'm not fussed about that. So more of that pellet mix, a bit more ground bait, mix them around. And obviously a couple of casts, I've put a bit of haze on. If things ain't going to plan, that's when I start like messing about with haze. Even like if you just put haze on, it's entirely up to you. But them things for me, but bait booster, you know, just to get that mix brought back. Don't use water. When I'm doing this, just use your bait booster to bring your mix back as you want it. Only want like a little bit on there. It brings everything back. Just tighten that up a bit. I'm not worried about sinking the, sinking that braid. I just want everything tight. Because I'm using an acicated feeder, obviously it's like a bit of a bolt rig anyway. Just keep that bit of tension on that. And this is what I do throughout my sessions, whether I'm fishing a match or pleasure fishing. I've got my little two-point tub like that, which is like sort of my mix. Look at it. You know, if you want to add a bit more ground bait to it, you can. If you're not happy with it, get that ready. Got me mould, little tweak. And the bites are really aggressive, even though they're bream in deep water. And it's, re it's re weird. In some of the matches I've fished, 
the deeper the water, there's a nice little liner there, and so I know they're there. They're really crafty. Everybody thinks bream are like, ah, they just pick up anything. Nah, especially on soft bottoms, even in the winter. I guarantee now, if you was in the summer fishing this, I think it would probably be on this on this area of the lake. I think it would probably be even harder to catch the fish on the bottom. They just want to come off. They'll sit on the sill. They're fizzing up. I love it, I absolutely love it. I mean, obviously it is nice that the rod bearer is round as a carp, but really, for me in the series, of the, or the sort of winter league series, if you like we fished here, it was about catching, a, you know, really catching the bream. The carp were a bonus. I had two great days on the carp, and um, I honestly don't think there's a lot you can do to catch the carp. I think you just go through the same. I wasn't changing anything. The only thing I did do when I thought I was on carp, I did actually put some more micros around the feeder. So I just, you know, sort of went from 70% ground bait to sort of 60% pellets when I thought there was carp in me peg, just to try and sort of get the carp to stay in the area. And that's what goes through my mind when I'm fishing. Just tighten that down. So I've probably caught, in the session we fished, I've probably caught like 15 bream, one carp. Fantastic, honestly. Oh yes. Well, I thought that was gonna be a carp then. Absolutely tanked it round. So that is five minutes and 50 on that. So in my mind, that feeder would have still had some bait in it. Another nice bream. Just keep that pressure on. You can actually wind them in. When they're nodding like that, there, you've got to go careful. And then they come towards you you can actually get them coming like that. That's when that big reel helps. I mean, I've actually used this setup actually all the way through the whole series of matches. It needs changing now. The shock leader needs changing. The braid's absolutely fine, but obviously if I kept coming back, I'd have to change the shock leader, make sure the knots are good. Obviously the rod's absolutely bang on. Like that, you can just keep winding like that, nice and steady, and just get wait for that surge if they turn. Yeah, you can just imagine, you can just feel it then, it's starting to turn. Such a great feeling when you get a bite like that, where it could be like a 20 pound carp or a three pound bream. You're always hoping for a carp, obviously. And now my shot leader is just on my reel now. Oh yeah, look at that. What a great fish to finish this session off. Ooh, steady, Eddie. See that nice six mil yellow bandom's been the best bait. I've messed about with eight mils and 10 mil, but six mil's been the best. I think it's just one of them days where they're picking up little baits, but never be afraid to put a bigger, a bigger hook bait on. Look at him. Absolute stunning Shearwater Special. So there you go. I hope you picked up some great tips on how I've actually approached, you know, a venue like Shearwater during the winter months. And, you know, take away what you can out of all the little things I've showed you. Don't forget to um, like and subscribe to the Sonia Bait YouTube channel for more great videos like this one. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have actually filming it. Thanks for watching and see you on the next episode.